in a million dreams becomes a reality. Uganda's dream to make its own vehicles and generally take full control of its transport sector has suddenly become a reality. And although the first modern vehicle to be wholly designed and built by Ugandans was publicly displayed in 2011, and President Yorim Seveni later rode in it at Makere University, few people expected that the country would be able to put its vehicles on the market before the end of the decade. New Vision TV traces the journey of the Kira electric vehicles. Just like the American project to take a man to the moon was launched in 1961 and accomplished by the end of the decade in 1969. Uganda's electric vehicle project that was unveiled in 2011 is putting its fast vehicles on the market at the end of 2019. Uganda's first electric vehicles on the road are the Kayola EVs that carry 90 passengers each. So even as the country still has to fight with extreme poverty, simple killer diseases like malaria, poor sanitation that with its attendance, health problems and landslides that displace thousands of people in trains, a team of determined Ugandan engineers working with the national military have fast the country into the 21st century race to put electric vehicles on the road alongside world leaders in the field like China, United States and Sweden. It started as a practical academic project by students and lecturers at the College of Engineering, Art, Design and Technology SEDAT of Macquarie University that unveiled their first all-electric proof of concept vehicle, the Kira Evica, at the beginning of the decade. Chaired by then Deputy Vice Chancellor Professor Sande Tikodri and led by engineer Paul Isaac Musasizi, the team followed up the fast car with a hybrid called Kira Smack. President Jerem Seveni had now stepped in to support the project financially for the team to take their work beyond academic excellence to applied solutions in the market. Thus, from SEDAT, the team started operating under the Center for Research in the Transport Technologies, developing their answer to Uganda's public transport problems. Finally, the project was cleared to operate as a public company, the Kira Motors Corporation. The materials we use to make this, once they begin to come from our own natural resources, Okay. After we have converted them into steel, into you know batteries and the kind of that is when you will begin to have the impact of this thing we are doing now. Uh, to expect it in the one year from now, I think is a bit being in a hurry. But otherwise, the foundation is now there, and also the capability of our own young people who are building this will be in hand. In other words, we are not training people who should also be able to do their own work with their own jobs. Although the government allocated 100 acres of land in Jinja district near the source of the Nile for constructing the plant where Uganda's vehicles are to be manufactured, Kira Motors still needed to hone its engineers' skills and moreover, it couldn't start making the vehicles before the manufacturing plant was ready. Kira Motors then entered two strategic partnerships. The first was with CHTC Motors of China where Kira Motors sent its engineers for finer scaling and practical experience and where they fabricated the parts of Uganda's first two buses. Here we are in one of our two buses that have been built by uh, my engineers in collaboration with uh, uh, Luero Industries uh, staff 
and also some friends from China where I had sent the six of them on the training. So the output of that training is basically this bus that we are in now. The Kayola bus parts were to be shipped to Uganda for final assembly, but the Kira plant at Jinja being far from ready, a second partner had to be found where the first ones could be built. Somewhere in the center of Uganda on the shores of Lake Choga, cut off from the public because of its sensitivity, is the biggest military base of the Republic at Nakasongola. There are several military institutions in Nakasongola, including Luero Industries, which runs several units, including a munitions factory. But it was the mechanical workshop that caught the Kira Motors' attention. After the necessary clearances, a partnership was designed between the Luero Industries, the manufacturing arm of Uganda People's Defense Forces, and the Kira Motors Corporation. Uh, the UPDF uh, engineers together working through NEC, we make sure that uh, we deliver this project. Uh, my request, however, is that uh, I had the professor saying that we should make sure we finish in time. For us, we don't have any problem. The only problem I had is that uh, it's phased over three financial years, which means we may finish in the second financial year, maybe in the first quarter, and have to wait until another financial year begins. So if it can be possible, if you can use your influence, even cabinet, to make sure that at least they give a supplemented front loading, so that when we begin work, we do it and finish it and then conclude the chapter and commission it. Luero Industries Workshop was found to have the best capability to assemble the parts that are made by CHTC China into real vehicles ready for the road. And so what looked like a dream yesterday has become the reality of today and the hope of the future. Uganda has proven its capability to make motor vehicles required for road transport needs. This bus will be programmed so that at a particular time it is at a certain station. If you have not filled it, it will go empty or passengers it won't matter. New Vision TV shall be bringing you details of Kira Motors Road to place Uganda in the rest for producing next generation vehicles in our subsequent episodes. I am Rathina Sejer reporting for New Vision TV. Thank you.